My art play a big role with my healing process. Um, when I start drawing or painting, I uh, enter into a trance that takes me deep into a cocoon that I create for myself that gives me waves and develops enchanting worlds. When I used these lines and dots and circles, the intricate lines, the repetition, it's like a pattern or rhythm you would find in music. I do have color codes. So if I use, for example, the cool tone, it's more in the relaxing area. If I use the warmer or hot tones, it's more in the discomfort. So I definitely use that a lot to express how my mood are at that time. Recently, I started making my own watercolor, which is really fun. So I uh, subtract pigments from fruits and vegetables and spices, and it's very therapeutic and I like it because, you know, when you make your own watercolor, of course you embrace your failure and your success. Definitely when you embrace your success, it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And then it smells good. I use clove oil to preserve it so then it doesn't, it doesn't get mold. It smells really lovely. Today I thought it would be nice to cook onion skin. Um, and this is what I did. So I cooked it for about an hour to uh, kill all the germs uh, so then it doesn't have that foolish smell. Um, and um, the technique that uh, I will use is called the lake pigmenting. What I'll be using is a basic agent and an acid agent to coagulate the pigment and then the pigment will separate from the water. What I'm gonna do right now is that, first of all, I'm gonna just take off a little bit the water and then I'm gonna sift the rest with the with coffee filter. It needs a couple of hours to sift completely. And when it is uh, sifted completely, you, know, you need to uh, wash it again with water to clear out the soda ash and uh, the aloe. I'm gonna do a demo on how to mix a pigment with the binder. So this is a sample of the avocado pigment that I recently did. You do one on one ratio between the pigment and the binder. So again, the binder is made with gum arabic, vegetable glycerin, It is also made with cloves and distilled water. The, and honey. Honey, you use it, why? It's because once it is um, solid, once your watercolor is solid, and then you wanna rehydrate it to use it. If you don't have honey, then your watercolor is gonna stay solid. Um, you need honey, so then it's gonna give it that viscosity and, and it's gonna help it to rehydrate. Now, the, the cloves uh, essential oil is going to act as a preservative because when you make a handmade watercolor, product, it's, you're gonna get mold. The clove oil is gonna act as a pr natural preservative. So all these products are non-toxic. 
it won't hurt the environment. And this is what I like about this technique is that it doesn't harm the, the environment while many artistic equipment and materials are very harmful to yourself, to your skin, and to the environment. I try to stay as maximum as I can environmental conscient. And my goal is really not to use toxic supplies that will end up one day in ocean or in uh, rivers and they'll end up in animals and one day maybe you will consume those fish or shellfish or or if you're if you're gonna go to that river and drink from it or swim in it this is people do not really realize how many chemicals you encounter in your life so i try you know to do my best and uh, avoid toxic equipment and it's so rewarding you know like i said you fail a lot this is an uh, this is still a technique that i try to learn and m master it as best as i can i still make mistakes and i uh, you know, and I uh, embrace my failure and, mis and uh, success. And it's so rewarding once, you, you know, you get these colors and then you're like, oh, I'm going to use it in my piece. And then you look at that piece and you tell people, I made it, you know, I create that color. <laughs> it's fun. And then, can you teach me? Yeah, sure. It's fun, and I, and I don't, I don't keep it for myself. I share, I teach. I, everybody can do it, and it's nice. Voila! Welcome to my world. I try to be an advocate for mental health. Um, as I suffer myself with uh, bipolar disorder, I try to break the stigma. A story of emotion is an exhibition where I advocate through my artistic journey of chronic diseases like migraine, fibromyalgia, interstitial cystitis, and invisible disabilities that causes chronic pain. I struggle myself with chronic disease and invisible illnesses. An invisible disability is classified as a physical, a mental or a neurological condition that is not visible from the outside, but yet can be limited or can challenge a person's movement, senses or activities. Unfortunately, these conditions are misunderstood because of a lack of information. My goal with this show um, is definitely to, to send a message and say that chronic illnesses and mental illnesses are not scary. I try to also advocate for women's rights as well, uh, because I feel like uh, women are criticized by society uh, no matter what they do. If they work too hard, they are uh, harshly criticized. Um, 
And then if they don't do too much because, you know, that's their rhythm and that's what they can do, uh, they still are criticized. So I try to um, express that you do the best that you can. Uh, try not to be the pleaser person because you'll, you'll spend time and energy and you'll waste it by, you know, trying to be the, the pleaser instead of uh, having the chance to discover yourself. In general, you don't want to be the pleaser. You want to know who you are, enjoy who you are, and enjoy your life. And that's what I try to do for myself, and that's what I try to do with my art.